Take a look at how things are standing because it was second place Spurs who brought Liverpool's unbeaten start to an end, but it was out not without a whole lot of controversy. So let's get someone in, a man who knows all about drama, our resident <laughs> actor, Frank LaBeouf, to join us, <laughs> and also Mark Clattenburg, who can hopefully explain some of these decisions. Oh, I hope so. <clears throat> oh, Mark, we've had to call him in a day early. Usually it's on a Monday or at least a weekday we're getting you in, isn't it, Mark? But obviously, with everything we saw in this game, we had to call on you. And thank you so much for being with us. So should we get underway straight away, then? Yeah, sure. Please. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> all right, let's start with Luis Diaz's disallowed goal. Obviously, we've seen the reaction after. We've seen the apologies as well about this. Your reaction to all of it, Mark? I, I, I'm flabbergasted because when I watched this live, I thought, oh, it's a tight offside. So therefore, when the play continues, the assistant referee always has to wait because we don't want to disallow a goal if it's a controversial offside. So that would inform all of the match officials, including the VAR and the AVR, that we have an offside. I don't understand what's happened at this point because Darren England, the VAR, has checked an incident. He's checked that there was an off... The, he drawn the, the first line. He realised it was not offside and he's gone, it's not offside, check complete, and therefore they've restarted the game incorrect because they've uh, uh, restarted it with a, an indirect free kick for offside. And it's a communication error. It's a, how do we say it? The, the, the communication where Darren England should have said, probably because of all the protocols that the, the referees get, the basic information has gone. We've checked the offside. It's not offside. Therefore, check complete. And it's a communication error between the referee. What I believe should have happened, the VAR should have said, to Simon Hooper, the referee, I've checked an offside. The goal should be given, and therefore we need to change the decision. But I don't know why the VAR didn't see the overall decision at the end of it that it was an offside, that the assistant given offside. So there's a complete communication error. And then the way they've said it has confused the referee, and then they've restarted the play. Could the referee have done something better? I believe Howard Webb would probably say, you know what, we need to save football and we need to say, look, let's restart the play in the correct way and let's get the offside correct. I believe the referee could have been clever here. I think he doesn't feel correct because this is short on the big screen. I think if he's clever and he had time, he could have said, look, blown his whistle and said, look, let's go back Let's move the, the, the offside five metres back and give himself a little bit of more time and then he could have got the right decision. But once he's restarted play under the protocol, he can't go back. So it's been an absolute big disaster for P.J. Well. Uh, a big disaster, Shaka. It's been seen as one of the biggest errors in VAR in the Premier League. Yeah, uh, yesterday Steve, Steve Reed described it as incompetent and, and I think that is a perfect word for it. Um, there, there are so many feelings to this that you, you almost not know where to, you don't know where to start. I, I guess I'll start by the one person who got things right, and that's the, that's the linesman, that's the referee's assistant. He is supposed to keep his, his flag down if he's unsure until the end of play. That's exactly what he did. From there on in, it's one feeling after the next. And, and I, I put a lot of, uh, of this down to, to Howard Webb as, as head of the, head of the PGMOL. Now, I, I firmly believe that um, VAR is, is there, it's for the good of the game, there will be human error, some human error you, you, can, you can accept or, or, or maybe even excuse, this certainly isn't, isn't one of them. And why I put this down to an administrative error is because of the protocols around how VAR communicates with the referee on the field. Now, I, I firmly believe that the referee on the field is the one who should be in charge of every single decision. He has the be-all and, and end-all of, of, of what, what is happening. If the VAR is, a, is, is suggesting to the referee that he goes to the monitor to review a decision or whatever it may be, he needs to communicate that in a way that doesn't bias the referee's thinking immediately. Now, getting called over, I guess, already provides some bias, but it's supposed to be fairly neutral language. Again, in governing this, the 
neutral language that's needed is simply check complete, play offside. Check complete, play onside. Whatever it may be. Now, given the explanation that we've had, is the only communication that went from VAR to the referee on the field is check complete, without a quantifier from, from there on in. In which case, either the protocols haven't been set out properly or they haven't been followed. If it's the latter, well, then Howard Webb is, 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 is clear of any, of any responsibility there. But if he doesn't set out how those communications are supposed to go from one to the other, then that's on him as, as head of the PGM world. And then to Mark's point, once a free kick is taken, protocol says the referee can't call it back at that point. So the bigger injustice here is not calling back a, a free kick after it was taken, as opposed to not awarding a goal that rightly should have stood. That, for me, I, again, it's, it's, it's sticking to rules that make absolutely no sense. Don't ask me what, first of all, don't even ask me what the VAR and his, the assistant VAR are doing that they don't realize that the, they, lined up for, they lined up for the offside free kick. They, they didn't figure that part out. I have no idea what, what they were doing to start with. And, uh, right, so, and, and I know there are big words out here like protocol and things that they have to follow, right? How about common sense? Yeah. How, how about, how about we, we get to the very basic of all of this? If VAR is in place to, at the very least, try to get most correct calls on the field, to make sure that you get to the correct call. What is the correct call in this case? Well, it's a goal. If you are the VAR official or the assistant VAR official, whoever it may be, and you now realize that there has been a breakdown in communication, and look, they're about to play as an offside and they're gonna kick off again, Get, communicate. Hey, goal, goal, goal. Yeah. It was a goal. Goal. It was a goal. Just, uh, uh, never mind protocols. Mm. Never mind check complete. Never mind any of this nonsense. You want to get the correct call. You deal with the protocol afterwards. You deal with that communication issue afterwards. But now get the call right. And you have the power to do so. And all you have to yell at the referee in his ears, goal, good goal, 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 stop. It's a goal. And, and while they say, hey, you know, once the play starts, then you can't go back. Nonsense. Nonsense. Because if you have made such a flagrant mistake, and this is flagrant, this is incompetent, this is nonsense, this is so incredibly flagrant, so incredibly incompetent, you have to admit that to yourself, saying, no, look, this is a goal. Let's go back. It's a goal. I know that people are going to throw, well, you know, if we start doing that for every mistake they make, and then it, it will never stop. The point of the system is to get the calls right. And this could not have gone any more wrong and could not have shown how more incompetent these people can be when given this responsibility. You had the chance to right a wrong by saying, <clears throat> look, we got all of that wrong. It's a goal. Let's get this right. You want to get the calls right, and especially the big calls. And to Ali's point, I, I think the game in general has less of an issue with you calling back a free kick that's already been mm. taken than not allowing a, a good goal that should have stood. A, a goal that defines the rest of this game. This isn't the seventh goal in an 8-0 win. This, this, is, this determines a lot about what happens from here on in. Exactly, Mark, because also then you can quickly go, OK, OK, we made a mistake quickly there and then rather than it coming to what it has now. Yeah, and I, I agree with what the guys are saying. When it's a factual decision, it becomes easier because this is a decision where the lines are drawn. It's clearly on site. It's not like, for example, it's a penalty. It's no penalty, blah, blah, blah. This is a factual decision. And I just think that, okay, it's a miscommunication. The PGM will have apologized. We can, we'll accept or don't accept how many apologies they're making during the season. Let's just move that to one side. How do we get this right in future? It's a communication error. The, the, the VAR has said this. Now they need to look back at how they communicate clearly, how they say, and I, I agree with Ali's, Ali Moreno's argument, it's goal, 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 goal. Just shout, get the message across, because clearly we follow up. Check complete. We don't care if the check's complete. We just want the decision correct. We need to communicate it better. It needs to be better involved. And... 
it's just a complete mess of a decision where it's simple decision. The assistants give a wrong decision. What should have happened? The communication said the original decision was offside. The, the, the offside is not correct. We need to award the goal. Referee, you need to award the goal. Therefore, we award the goal. Communication finished and finished off. I just don't believe that we can hide behind all this communication rubbish. We've got to get the decision correct. And if it needs to be shouted, the referee could have been clever because I think they believed, what was it, five, six seconds, eight seconds after the incident, they realised they got it wrong. Could they not have found a reason to go, <whistles> blow the whistle and go, you know what, the free kick was in an incorrect position. You know what, let's get the decision correct. There's a way to hide behind the protocol. We don't always have to find the protocol. We can find a way around it. And I think top referees, experienced referees, Simon Hooper is now an inexperienced referee. He'll learn from this how to deal with these type of incidents. The experienced referees deal with it slightly different. And you know what? It's a big disaster for BGML this weekend because in a high-profile game with an inexperienced referee and a VAR that was in Dubai over the few days and there's an argument, was he ready for this game? I just think it's a big disaster.